came across this uh, video on uh, YouTube the other day uh, by a guy named Fran Betters, and he was tying the Osable Wolf, which is a Michigan Michigan fly. It's um, it's a very bushy, you know, wolf pattern, and uh, he ties his with more of an orangish um, body. And um, I've been working on using a hair's mask to tie these. And so um, I'm going to whip one up today for the video. So I'm going to tie it on a size 10 hook. And for a hook, I'm going to use Moonlit's MLO 52 in a, in a number 10. So it's just a standard wire, large gape, barbless hook, one of my favorite hooks. And so I'll uh, use that. And for thread, I'm going to use Semperfly's Waxed in Brown Olive in ADOT. So what I'll do here is I'm going to start my thread right behind the eye. And I'm going to bring it down to halfway down the shank. So roughly about there. And then I'm going to bring it back halfway. And that's where I'm going to start my wing. So for my hair, I'm going to use some Comparadun. Uh, this is in dark uh, X Caddis is the, is the color. And um, it's short Comparadun hair. And it's also, it's very... Uh, this particular patch has a lot of under fur in it. So you can see it's uh, it's pretty pretty dirty stuff. So I'm gonna brush it out really good. Get it nice and clean. And for the wings, I'm gonna use a very healthy clump because I have to split them. So I'm gonna use a little bit more than I normally would for, you know, for a Comparadon or uh, any other kind of a, you know, a caddis or something like that. So tap it, stack it. This is not a neat and tidy fly, so it's okay to, to let it be a little bit out of control. I'm gonna measure my tips, the length of my shank. I'm gonna bring them up. And then I'm going to flatten my thread. I'm going to go around my clump one time, set it down, and then I'll flare it. Really hold on to these butts. Try to keep your hair from spinning around the shank. Just get it in there really nice and tight. All right, so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut these butts off as short as I can. And keep everything right up on top. I'll hold on to what little butt I have here and get that cinch down. And then I can grab the tips and pull them straight up. Make sure that it's nice and centered. And then I'll come in and I'll create a thread dam. So I'll go all the way to the eye and then bring it back up and that'll keep it from sliding forward as I'm trying to dam my hair. Just build up a little bit of a, a dam under there. Okay, so now that's that's standing up pretty nicely. We got one little piece there that's going crazy. Okay, and I'll come back in here and just tidy up all of the, the butt ends. All right, so now all I need to do is split it. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to take these two fibers off. 
And then I'm going to just try to uh, mind my hands for just a minute, but I'm going to try to just split it into, you know, 50-50 here. I'm pretty as even as I can possibly get them. I'm going to bring my thread through from front to back. And I'll pull this wing and go back to front and just kind of figure eight my wings. So now they're split. Roughly 50%, and that's not perfect, but hard to get perfect. Okay, now I need to collect them. So just like I would do with, a, with a, any kind of a wolf pattern. I'm gonna bring my thread around the base of the clump nearest me. And just kind of get it nicely collected. And I wanna be sure not to pull hard on that because if I do, I'm gonna flare it. And I'm gonna tilt my Norvice I'm going to do this wing. So, same thing. These are just collecting wraps. Try not to use too much tension, just get them nice and snug. And then I'll bring my thread back around the shank to pull, and that way it doesn't doesn't flare my wings at all. Okay? So you can see I'm pretty I'm pretty, uh, pretty well split. Okay, so now the tail on this fly, let me go ahead and bring my thread back and just get a nice thread base all the way down my shank. The tail on this fly is also the same kind of hair. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another clump off. And um, obviously not nearly as much. Small clump, maybe even less than that. Um, let me clean all the under fur and fuzz out of here. I'm going to go ahead and stack it. So this is going to be my tail clump. Go ahead and bring my thread back down. And again, I want my tail about the same length as my shaft. I'm going to transfer. Keep it right up on top. And I'm going to go ahead and do some loose wraps all the way to the front without flaring my butt ends too much. Bring it back. Okay, and there's my tail. And I want to make sure that my tail is right up on top of this hook shank. So those thread wraps can tend to bring it off to the side and you can see I'm a little bit farther down that side than this side. Um, make sure it's nice and secure. I'll need to get rid of all these butt ends. Okay, and now I can look at this side, and if I have some, some deer hair that's traveling down the side of the shank of the hook, I can go ahead and remove it, because I want that tail to be nice, nicely positioned right on top. I'll bring my thread back in here and, and smooth out this underbody, and now I can put a little bit more tension on it.
Let's get the underbody nice and clean. Okay. Now we have tails and wing. Let's see, I still have some deer hair traveling a little farther down on that side. Which probably doesn't matter to the fish, but it matters to me. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to uh, dub it. And for dubbing, I'm going to use uh, just some, some natural hair's ear. And I'm going to dub it fairly tight. Um, and I can use my Velcro brush at the end to get it as buggy as I want. But instead of putting, putting my dubbing on loose, I'm going, to, I'm going to dub it on fairly tight. Okay, I'm going to start with that. Make sure that my first wrap is right up against my tail. Couple more wraps, and then I'll tie in my hackle. What I like about this fly is just how out of control it looks. Okay, so now for a hackle, I'm going to use some uh, spotted badger, speckled badger, I'm sorry. And let's see, I have a piece. Oh, here's the piece I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and expose my stem. And then I'm going to remove the leading edge. Not all of it, just a little bit to get it started. And I'm going to tie my stem in almost perpendicular. Let me get these. So one of the things that the uh, posts do around the base of the wings is they actually allow you to manipulate and move. That tied in really well. Okay, and then I can manipulate them back. Bring my thread up right behind the eye, and then I'm going to use some more dubbing. Wings back. And then I just brought my thread underneath back up to the eye, which you can see that thread wrap. Actually, you can't, it disappeared. Normally, you could see that thread wrap, but uh, I'm going to cover it with a hackle anyway, so. 
All right. And I like to start at the behind the eye and go back to the wing because that way I know I won't crowd my eyes. If, as if I try to move forward with my dubbing, I might. All right, so now my hackle started, and I'm going to go ahead and use a hackle plier and do my rotary just so I can keep my hands out of the camera. And just kind of carefully make sure that you don't grab any of the deer hair on the wing and fold it down. And I want to pack as much hackle as I can up behind these wings. Somebody told me once with humpies and wolves that you do as many wraps as you think you can behind and then add one more. All right, and now I'm going to come in front of the wings. And I want these to be as close to each other as I can. I don't really want to do a, a palmering wrap here like I would on a stemmy or something like that. I really want to get it as close and as tight as I can and just make it a brush. Okay. And I can bring my thread in, come behind my hackle, and don't worry if you actually push a couple of hackle fibers forward when you're tying it off because I'm going to half hitch this fly and that's going to push everything back. I'm going to go behind and then in front and really lock it in and then just open the tips of my scissors, cut it off. Okay, and then I'm going to take my half hitch tool, which is basically just my um, whip finisher, pop it right over the eye, and this will push everything backwards, so that's six turns, I'll use a little bit of UV, this is uh, solar res, bone dry. Try to get my thread wraps. Hit it with the torch. All right, so now it's pretty bushy looking if you want to bush it up even more though you could take your uh, velcro brush get a hold of your tails come up underneath on top through your sides now it's totally out of control all right, so thanks for watching. That's my version of the Osable Wolf. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And that's it. Thank you.